So we're starting another um, lecture today. I must say that for the first time we have uh, a four-legged guest. We're very happy to be to have the, him with us. Um, not for the first time. I'm sorry for that. Then everybody's well seen and welcome to our lecture. Uh, artificial intelligence, whether we want it or not, enters our lives and enters the art. What can it do in the sphere of of the image uh, can be told by, it will tell us Alexander Fafua, who is uh, researching that topic to, at length. Hello. Hello, I was wondering, I did not prepare um, a, like a rigid script so we could, we could discuss things to, to, to a more, in a more individual way. Maybe to start off with, I, let me tell you a few things about myself and I'll ask, ask you about you. I wanted to tell you something interesting which could also be useful to you. I am a data scientist. A data scientist is somebody who's working with the data. And at some point, data science the uh, started to change into machine learning. So uh, we are teaching machines to do things for us. And uh, later, when machine learning became wise, it, it turned into AI. AI, you know, AI is, is, has a lot of media hype than more than machine learning. Machine learning is not so super sexy as AI. For me, it's a certain broadening of, ca of a professional career. I am not a magical type. I'm a, what AI does is sometimes magical. It's not that. I'm magical. I've done that for many years. I'm a doctor in this topic, so that the, and this is how it worked. It is not uh, it's some, something extremely difficult, but you have to know how to um, uh, establish that. Uh, even though I'm not a user, I'm a more of a researcher. It's not a topic for individual persons. It's not that one person is able overnight to do some breakthrough in this. It's like that rather topics which are made by huge companies which have huge budgets. Facebooks, Googles, and corporations like that, they develop such topics and they push the topic forward. We today, we are able, we're not able to do a lot ourselves because it's technologically very complex um, today. But I would, what I would like to show you to you today I thought that you it could be useful to you so that you leave our meeting today um, with a certain understanding what you can expect from artificial intelligence, what is true, what is not true, what is just a hype and a bubble and some fake promise, and, or, and what can you do out of things and what is your potential opportunity to do anything in the future and if so uh, starting from which um, uh, which p p future we're talking about because there are plenty of hype plenty of topics that promise that it's enough to plug and play there's some startup which offers something that it will do something in a magical way and i wanted to show you today what it looks like and what it looked like over the last two three years just so that you can see the dynamics of this development me being a developer too, I would not want to enter uh, some gibberish and to talk in the Python libraries to you or machine learning libraries. Does anybody have a te the expectation that that's technological? More pragmatic than, than technological. Okay. I will show you the first example. Before we start, I wanted to tell you how, how it happened that I'm here. The fact that artificial intelligence is painting pictures, it's been painting pictures for a long time. Before that, these pictures was an, an abstract art. If somebody is enough old, just like I am, they remember Winamp and Winamp. When you started uh, started music, there were some animations on this on the screen, right? And the animations from Winamp they were coded, they were hard coded. That's important to remember. Some programmer wrote down that there will be some sort of like a whirlpool which was pulsa pulsating with the music, some musical visualization, but it was coded. It was inscribed in the program. It looked random. There were new shapes coming in, but uh, to the music. But this was all coded hard to some mathematical 
um, algorithm, so it was created by a human being. Meanwhile, several those of years passed, the computers got developed, especially, I mean, the progress in the architecture of uh, graphic cards, and uh, it it became possible for the for the computer to paint pictures which are not set as a as as a hard rule so let's say we want a computer to paint a picture for us to paint a face but we don't say that if there's eye on the left hand side and there's an eye or there has to be an eye on the right hand side so we do not write any rules we have artificial intelligence generative I know these words, the, the term, terminologies are quite fluid. It's all new, it can all change. But this is how you call it normally. This is a, a generative AI. It can generate things out of itself. And it's not based on any rule. That's the first uh, thing, and that's the, the most intuitive way of understanding it. The computers, for a very long time, allowed, were able to generate... Um, to generate... Uh, some pictures but they were it was all based on an algorithm which was devised by someone somebody said okay this is what it was going to look like the let's say the background will be green and if there's a, if there's a, something that resembles a sky it will be blue i will show you some examples that you probably know that but i, I some, somehow have to sometimes have to refer to some obvious things but some of them might not be too obvious to you do you know uh, uh, do you know a page this person does not exist so you know it okay now look at it with myself so as i look at it as a as a professional and let's see if we see things in a similar way okay we have an image generated by an algorithm by the model of the of the well model model because algorithm is more a mathematical formula, and model is educated. I was not supposed to speak gibberish, so uh, or scientists, and so I'll just shut up. Okay, we have a generated portrait. Two years ago, there was not really possibility in, to generate a person in such uh, with at such quality. She would have to be a much smaller picture. And here we have this mathematical complexity, which means that the, uh, the when when the size of the image is increased by a bit, the uh, amount of pixels in this image increase and data increases by a uh, like a, by a very high number. So you cannot naturally make a full HD here. It, this will be just a, some computer. Uh, uh, some computer amounts like 512 to 512 today making a face 1024 per 1024 pixels uh, um, uh, is a great computational achievement so this is the first information for you as the pe person as, as people who work in the industry that this according to me does is is not still ready to use to be honest, in the introductions, when you have higher expectations than 500 per 500, but of course, there are ways to work with it. But let's think if it makes sense together. If you can do anything with it, I don't think that nothing, not all is lost. But it's not so all um, color roses and butterflies. So this is this person does not exist. It's a demo which shows how a generative model works when. It, which which sort of studied the faces of several billion million people and it explained the concept to itself and it says okay i do understand what the face looks like and this is what the artificial intelligence looks like and this more modern like uh, modern um, this more advanced that it's a self-learning uh, model it's a self-learning machine that allows you to generate and understand the world according to how this uh, artificial intelligence intelligence understands it so nobody wrote an algorithm for the, the separation between the eyes, but it by itself, by watching like millions of images, the AI understood the rule. Let's refresh that and see what it looks like. Now, look, look at it from the point of view of a researcher. There's always some concept, some idea, but for every concept, there's anti-concept. 
So you can see the artifacts here. So if you would work on on these algorithms, you would see that something is wrong. There's, she has something in between her teeth, right? So these are like the artifacts or, or the, uh, impurities of the artificial intelligence. It it knows that there can be something that that is getting reflected on the teeth, but it does not understand that this should be between the teeth or uh, on the on 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 a tooth, which would be natural. That shows that not always that generalization worked well. Maybe 20 more million images and the artificial intelligence will start to understand that this reflection should not appear in that place. Do you know what I mean? I'm getting into that new ones right now so that you... Uh, I wanted to be a, um, a, a critic of that all because you will hear all that hype, it's great, AI will be doing things for us, films for us and painting images for us. But wait, wait. First of all, uh, apparently it's easy, but extremely difficult for computers. So generating a realistic face, people people say, wow, this per person does not exist, phenomenal. But this is like a huge glitch. Okay, it's uh, I'll rephrase that and see what happens in the next one. Okay, we have another gentleman and you have a total glitch. You have the other eye on the uh, in there. Can you see on the, the, there, there's somebody with an eye on the forehead? So this this did not work perfectly, but this is some evident mistake. Then you refresh. Let's move on. We have another gentleman. What can, what can you see here? If you were working in the bank and somebody would come and say, well, this is my this is my ID. What would draw your attention? But because you know that people are setting up social profiles and they use these pictures or to, to put accounts on LinkedIn and then they uh, impersonate other people. So how do you tell if it's a human being or not? You have those problems with symmetry. The generalization of the teeth. Does anybody have the... Um, the teeth like that, it's quite difficult to hurt. So in general, this is quite uh, good, but you can see the scale of the problem that we have one frame, only one frame, and you love several, well, like uh, several dozen frames per second. And here we have one frame here and it didn't work out well. So the first um, conclusion for me is that these are interesting tools to get to know them, but they're not ready for mm, direct use. I didn't show you everything yet. So here, this person does not exist. Another lady. Yeah, I mean, th this one works pretty well. But who will notice one glitch which this algorithm, because it's Talgan 2, it's well known for one glitch uh, that's what you see in computer games. That's, for example, if you if you can enter the, the sort of drive the car in the wall halfway, this is called a glitch. It's a typical glitch for this algorithm. Yeah, the ears. Mm, it didn't watch enough millions of pictures. It could not gener generalize the knowledge that the ears you put the same earrings on the ears. So in this iter I mean, in the new iteration, it can already do this, but this could not do that at that time. So it, it makes some strange uh, things. Well, this one earring is a bit different, but you know it as a person. I mean, you know, you, you know from, but it's your knowledge from another domain that the earring should be the same. So the first thing I wanted to present to you is that also, the eyebrows are not... Well, I mean, some people have eyebrows like this, but this is a, a bit unsettling. So these things are not as precise as you as some might wish. And if you wanted to use that in production, then it, it's not good and, um, as, as good as you would want them to be. The solution could be the, the use of the generator, the AI generators for creating content, which is more... Uh, uh, animated, drawn, or something that would be processed by some filters. 
and I will show something like that too. And then the situation is easier there because we started from the most difficult problem, creation of a photorealistic face. For millions of years of evolution, we have this sense that if we feel, the, if you see the face, that it's unreal. There's problem of exp in expression. We have a radar which quickly dispels that for us. But here we, you can see it's almost ideal. There's there are still some things missing, but we're still not in the place where you would want to be. And I'm I'm talking about still images. We're still not in the situation of uh, of animation. Let's now move to uh, a demo. A, a year ago, I made a demo because I toyed around with different technologies, and I made a demo in which I play the the drums and mm, on the side I, the images. Uh, um, uh, being displayed and they morph from from one to another. First, I'll show it to you and then I'll tell you how I did it and I'll show you the difference in approach and why. Where did it? Where did I take it from? I made it as a demo and I wanted to shoot it once again and then and it is as it is but I'm I'm showing you the essence of the of, of the of 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 this thing how this technology what this technology should look like a year ago So the first uh, competition um, for for uh, something that is created by AI, I noticed that when I'm generating this the, the images by artificial intelligence and I add some description, people are not able to describe that. So I added an analog uh, element, the, which is the drums, and then people started to understand. Okay, so he's playing, and this is being painted down there. Okay. I'll show you. You see, I can play the yeah, I play the drums, and to that I added the the paintings are being of the, this paint these paintings never existed before, and these are the paintings which are which are learned by artificial intelligence based on the images from Wikipedia. Morphing between frames, did, did you do that or was it artificial intelligence? It's artificial intelligence. There are several algorithms for morphing. Here is it, it's very advanced morphing because it's done. It's 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 for rhythm, for pitch, all the this algorithm that I drew out from playing percussion. I don't know why we have no sound, but it does not matter for unless you will um, unmute me in the console. Minijack is connected. It's not active right now. Okay, this we are another. When I'm playing, uh, he's playing that uh, in the rhythm. He takes uh, para different parameters, tempo, etc., and animates it. You can see how I made it. It, it. I won't make it. It's it's my fault. I I know what's happening. So thanks. I have it mixed up because it's an experimental computer. It has a lot of things spoiled or destroyed in, on purpose so that other things would work. So this we are another. I made this approach, I approached this in this way because I, I couldn't do that with realistic images, for photorealistic uh, images, because I would not be able to 
-hmm. in the real within the real budget to generate that that why i was kept into into those uh, paintings because uh, you know it's an abstraction so you don't see that like somebody has for example three eyes so three or four eyes is not a problem but if we went into if i went into, into photos that would be a problem then but also here you can see certain asymmetrical behaviors for example, that it got overlearned and has a lot of blue. And I tried to forcefully do something like that, I think, for a week. And uh, I failed. But I must tell you that's another thing. That if we're talking about like super uh, artificial intelligence, it's autonomous. These are not rules that I can do, come and, and I will change the colors. However, you know probably how you do that in post production. So it's not a problem totally lost, but it's not something that you can use. Also, have a look here that I've divided that um, into two. I had to do something uh, uh, in, look at the resolution here. Another thing is that it generated squares. Of course, I I do feel that in some cosmic budget there are some companies on, or researchers that uh, will make a special team and they will create something. Um, I'm talking about uh, things that you can do on your own. It's something something you can you do with a normal budget that that is made available by big by big companies. And these are companies such as Facebook, as Google, OpenAI. NVIDIA, the, the, uh, uh, which you can, uh, they pr provide such things which you can use later, for example. Okay, let's move on. Okay. I think it would be good to have a look at the trend that is very well n known here because I, I you, if you've heard about it probably because when you're reading the internet uh, you see that artificial intelligence uh, you can see the he headlines that artificial intelligence won uh, some sort of art uh, some art uh, competition and or best at um, uh, artists from all around the world. Like, do you know Dali E? Have you had a chance to play around with it? Yes, but I can see that the majority of you have not yet. Okay, uh, maybe we'll do um, a small game in here, like, no, not to click around, but so that you can talk to me and I will tell you uh, several important things about that. I think what well, it's one of the more promising technologies and I think that if I were in your place and if I worked with this sort of uh, topics like image uh, I would certainly get interested with that I will observe that trend and I here I have here in my experimental laptop I have installed mm, a generator it is a bit more professional but it's still not it's, it's still a rather user-friendly interface that we can write things. So it works like that. We put in an English text of what we would like to have painted, and it will be painted by the artificial intelligence. I decreased all the parameters on purpose because painting one image takes a lot of time. So this, the, thing, the second thing is we will not be doing 100 proposals of one um, image, but one by one. And then I will show to you how you can tune that or how to get to the higher level and then you might maybe you will give me some challenge and we'll see what we could do with that okay what should we mm, draw let's start with something let's start with something simple mm. 
Now this is a difficult one because we do not have generalization, but 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 an entity. I think it's not if he gets you here to paint a film with a spring and, and something open, and maybe he will get that. Le okay, let's see what it looks like. Okay, let's see that. S to start from, we have an, the text interpreter. It has to understand that film and spring and open. It, it is supposed to have some meaning for them, for that. Secondly, to, for it to paint uh, uh, something like this, it, he had to look for, he had to have seen something similar. If I say two girls on the beach playing ball, because it learns from the pictures on the internet, he saw billions and billions of pictures, and these pictures were tagged in different photos. And the, the the AI watched that, of course not my laptop, because it would not be able to do that, but it's a model which is uh, made available by big companies. And now when I give him film spring open, how do you think, how do you think for yourself? Is it able to understand anything of it? Okay, let's let's see. As I said, I decrease the quality so that we, but then maybe we'll try to generate something, something bigger. We do not want to wait. What did the poet have in mind? As you can see, the first thing is that you have to be able to talk to artificial intelligence. But how to talk to artificial intelligence if it's a black box? That's what it's called. It is a, these are black, black box models. But I have never had a chance to talk to my black box. As if he made my film, film blue, where I was playing drums, I didn't have a chance to say, don't give me so much blue color. This is how, how it learned. And that's it. And now look here, film spring open. And that's that was the association it got. Now I'll tell him, okay, do five, do five copies out of that, and we'll see. Uh, yes, I I I d d disabled faces here because. The, because um, because uh, faces render for quite a long time. We're working like developers. We see if uh, things render in the right in the right if things go in the right direction. Uh, I think it's understood that it has to be some sort of announcement. So yes, or or some sort of a film film poster it looks like a pamphlet maybe this is more or less what it looks like listen so let's try from some, something simple and let's try to build that and see if we've learned anything but we have the first development is that you have to start from from the helicopter view and go and add details rather than from something very detailed because uh, let's say we're in a hotel if i wrote if i gave a, the room number that i want the view from that room artificial intelligence probably did not see the view from that window and will not be able to to depict that they had it had to learn from something maybe some things could be uh guessed uh, i uh, I, I, I made it on purpose. I'm using words which do not exist for the translator to have uh, to, to see how he managed to translate that. Hell. But what sort of hell? What would the hell? I don't know. The hell and heaven. Thank you. 
You do not have such weird things installed or some to have s some strange computers. For a few dollars, you can buy credits and generate that through your uh, browser. But today, we, we, we're talking to make things in a more effective way mm, and to find out which is... Uh, um, which is more effective or not. I think it approached this as a certain, as a, as a film title. Okay. Yes, we do. can you pre prevent him from doing something? Yes, we have also negative things. So, Hell and Heaven. I think that it, it loses the, the, the letters, but it's a base. And so another information for you that is not so directly ready for production. And if, as you can see, if something is so well um, edited, it was more, it was improved and rather than rendered from the outset. There's more Hell than Heaven. And if we put in the opposite, heaven and hell, let's see. Okay, we'll start to tweak things. I'll show you some things after we, ah, after which we'll have the aha moment. Many pe people say, that artificial intelligence is it destroyed everything because everybody can paint a picture everybody can be an artist but if when you try it for the first time and you give those texts it, it doesn't look like art but we generated some some uh, uh, images which are not very beautiful and they do not have the wow effect the people should look at them and say okay what's next so that's why here it's good to see that that it's not we are uh, we're not artists. We're we're not artists. Uh, not because we don't like the skill, but we have nothing to to share, and that's the sad truth. Okay, heaven and hell. That's more like it. I like that. I like those demons. The, how do you like that? You said one. He said very, one's very nice. I don't know which one, but uh, top right. Just by chance, we never said that it, it's supposed to be a movie poster, and we got movie posters. A bit small, you can improve them, you can uh, change them into bigger ones, but uh, the artificial intelligence can, can do big things from small things. It's an intelligent upscaling. There was uh, a detective movie, uh, they said it, uh, CSI, yes, they said... They uh, you you can do that what they did in CSI with the, with the, uh, with what's uh, in the blurred picture. There's nothing. Uh, of course, it has to guess, but it does it in an intelligent way. So we have those posters. I think well, they look pretty nice. Uh, they are fantastic, and uh, I cannot draw a circle. And what's here um, is outside of my scale of uh, of my aesthetic capability. We can look at big ones. Here is a, here is a um, a bad side. I mean, I mean, here's a drawback that it, we get it all recorded, and they're pretty small too. So you have to work with them again. It's good for um for checking for checking your initial idea. What if we had an, an idea and I want to sketch it, you know, jumps over several steps of the process and what it would look like in terms of composition. I also heard from people from from the commercials that they use it from for building certain elements of screenplay or some initial script or some mood boards to generate. Now let's see a few tricks. We have heaven and hell, but let's say, well, uh, let's let's add an artist. Uh, he has a 
let's say the constant cop copeman we have a set of uh, uh, template artists and let's see what he would look like uh, would how he would draw that oh it does refresh like that I think Constance Copeman would do it like this. Okay, let's try. I don't know if maybe maybe that's how he really, that's what, what he was painting like. No, something went wrong. We have a different propos proposal. John Highland. I don't know if we got some some problem there. Let me have a look. I will show you what's happening in the background. I'll tell you if he, if he's still uh, calculating or not, and depending on that, we'll know what to do. Maybe, yeah. Let's try something simpler. So here's an interesting and uh, another interesting thing that we have not only creation of images, we can also transfer or st style transfer. It's another it's another mm, uh, term to mm, which allows us to, like uh, search term. Transfer style transfer is one of the most most useful thing for you. I'll show you the machine for style transfer. So it rendered for us two girls playing tennis, and it also superimposed the style of a given artist. Of course, the more artists have have painted, and the more consistent his style was, the more artificial intelligence can learn it. Well, when he, well, you, if you played something like that, and uh, you, you, if somebody painted only one picture and uh, it was in no particular style, you cannot expect uh, very good results. This is EB Synth. Have you heard about that? EB Synth is a tool for trans style, style transfer, which in the future, I don't know, because because it's ready for production, it would should help in the future the people who create movies in the style, in the, uh, in the style transfer. I'll show you what's inside and what it does, and we can turn it on together and see what will happen. In general, we have two key frames. And these Th this is like a painted cat. That's one. That's the other one. And here, these are keys. To that we have a video. So this is frame by frame, several seconds of a video. I don't know how many frames are there, maybe two, three, seconds of the video so now this tool tries to learn the style and transfer 
that style into other frames. And then you can sort of write it, write it, uh, uh, sort of save it somewhere and uh, import or do whatever. We'll try to launch that. We would like to, we would like all that. Would like all that to look. like this one, yes? You see, you see I had, an, I had so, some preps here you can't do it spontaneously you have to be very patient for that so let's see how it works and now it happens in order to do that you need you need a computer which has a gpu which is um player computer uh, uh, computer uh, graphic card and six gigabytes of ram so if you have a n nice uh, coffee shop uh, laptop, you will not manage to do anything that, like that. It's better to use such things through through a um, browser, pay several dollars and click off. And you can already can hear some of you can hear that it's already frying in order to render a few things, a few um, a few frames. It's horrible. And if you do to do it more often, you will get a huge uh, computer with huge cards and and uh, fans uh, ventilating fans and then you might be able to do it it's very computa computationally intensive let's see what happened here i have a i have an out it's something was generated and this is the video no this is the original video yes and where's the out so here are the frames which have been redrawn. What's interesting, this is uh, this tool is free of charge, but I don't know if that would be useful to you in real life, because not everything can be stable. What's what what you can see here, but maybe in some post production. Um, or duplicate, or as you as you have seen, I hope that you see the, con the, the the how the dots are connected. If you have seen that he doesn't understand one, that one ear sh should can, has to be similar to the other one. They will it will also not understand that uh, a piece of gra like a straw of grass has to be exactly the same. We can oh we had we can f see things. Uh, which the uh, AI does not understand and so there's still um, a way to go for the AI before it's perfect so it recolored everything why do we talk about AI because it made that for us in an autonomous way we did not have to say that if you're drawing um, a link so you have to do that with those colors and with that with those uh, sort of strokes we just provided but it it made sort of assume that from uh, two colored frames i said this is the basic style I'll learn from that do you think if we give more frames would it be better or worse if we get, give more examples we would learn better or worse better absolutely if we add more for because for example if we have a, let's say we have a frame when the bird is flying here Let's say we, we would need to add the frame with the with the flower. It, it might not know how it should be painted, and could be wrong. So it also gives you a certain feeling of when that would work and when not. So if it changes every second totally, then the, the style transfer cannot work. If it learns on one frame after several uh, seconds, everything will change. It will not be able to extrapolate all this because how i'm i'm listening to your question i wanted to ask if we because you you we can see these links here we have those several seconds of film and if we added a reference that it would be in a different style here 
we referenced the picture of that lynx uh, remade one to one and if we gave some other picture of totally different in a different style of some of some painter would it also be remade like this yes it is doable but it would have to learn for about one hour on a on a, on a normal gaming laptop as i have that is also very difficult and there's not much control over it so it's also it's also the, the this a style of transfer i i did something like that too Here I, I presented a few images of uh, Beksinski and I uh, tried to transfer them so that they recall it. Here is the image of uh, Beksinski. Here is some church in Normandy. I don't know where exactly. And here it's uh, this is the image created uh, by, with the transfer of style. As you can see, it's difficult to look for some phenomenal effects, um, but sometimes you get better results. And these are also some dry results. If you also, mm, um, I if you t if tweaked it a bit, you t it will get better. But but remaking this picture with that style in here, it, when we s set up everything, if so, if you're good, you can do. It takes several days, and it, it takes several days to to set that up, and then this is done for an hour maybe. So this is a plane by Beksinski, of course it has a, its name here. And here I took some uh, for background and they remade it. There's no such effect. So it, it works or not, but you can transfer the style. There are plenty of uh, freestyles available in the internet because somebody did a Picasso or something like this. You see that in demos, in apps, in, in, in the phone. But if you were trying to do uh, uh, some non-typical style to teach the, the artificial intelligence in a non-typical style, you can, you can do it. You can see that on this example. OK, so. Mm. Let, let me show you how to get a bit more from that. We do not know how that works. Uh, we do, mm, there are books w which talk about that, and I, sh I wanted to, to, to tell you what is the difference between how we come up with think, things and uh, what if we add some instructions. Have you heard about the, the DALI guidebook? And this is this still developed manual, which tells you how to talk to that artificial intelligence so that it's easier for AI to understand at which point they are, what we can expect from it. So we're experimentally discovering how it learned, basing on reading internet, tags, pictures, hashtags, how it understands what's there and we'll see so, some samples as you can see there's plenty of interesting topics here and only when we combine a lots of lots of these things only then we get some control of what's happening we can finally evade those boring topics and we can have some impact uh, we can achieve something 
and maybe let's try something ready, so, uh, which is sort of prepared already. Maybe some example. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, maybe it's not covered in hell, but let's try it if I'm able to copy this text. Text. We can make a discussion after this one prompt and then we'll discuss things and see. So look, these are prompts. Some that you have several levels. One is artificial intelligence. Uh, is just model for um, finding out for recognizing what you uh, what you write. So it's it's as if you were write, uh, talking to a chatbot. It's NLP. It's a chatbot sends that to a different engine, which puts that apart into different uh, um, elements, and then it sends it to a, a different artificial intelligence that paints it. There are some other stages. It's a f there are fascinating things uh, happening in the background. We have a lot of such modifier. Thanks to them, we can use what is uh, what, what 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 we want to achieve. It's a long process, and there are two approaches. One is spaghetti on the wall. I generate one hundred images, and I select ones. This is what we made. It. We had a batch with six, twelve images, and some of them worked. But you can also tune and tweak one um, request, one query. But remember that these are non-deterministic things. It's not that every whenever we click something, something can be added, something can be re redrawn from the very outset, and that's what AI will do. So it's not like we change the style and we have the same stuff. And we might get a different composition every time, and that's how it's going to work. Listen, let's do something. Let's do something crazy. It's not a manual to this system. It's slightly different. Or maybe I'll get some uh, a more developed prompt. Do you see the framing? Framing, phone time, shoot, context, light, prompt, uh, year, and usage context. I think it resonates more with you. And it gives you uh, the feeling of controlling all this. All this. And we have two girls playing tennis. Let's let's leave them like that. Let's see what it looks like without a control. The two girls playing tennis. Okay. The the, the faces are mm, are um, disabled because they too, take too much time. Okay. We have three girls playing tennis. One is a really strange head. Whatever. Now let's try to tune this. We'll add some effects and all this uh, description in the context and see if that is going to change something for us. Here we have a problem that it makes no sense, because we ask him for a close-up of people who play tennis. That's difficult, I think. I don't know how it's going to work with that. But this is the beauty of it, that uh, for us, this is difficult. And this is something that fascinates me the most, that we can try such stuff. Mm, I don't know what to expect. Dramatic backlighting in tennis? I don't know if tennis so is so dramatic. I think it's like maybe... Uh, spare throwing is more dramatic. And you can see, we do have something interesting. Apart from the fact that there are some glitches, but I can steer those glitches to some extent, and you can too, because you, the better credits you buy, the more time you get rendered, you will get less glitches. We're just looking at a very briefly to the general rule of uh, the work of artificial intelligence. We have a close-up, we have a, st a st studio photographic. It looks like a studio, doesn't it? Okay, so let's go to the discussion.
Thank you. Uh, the topic that the top this topic is very interesting for me because we have a situation like that in film schools. I'm teaching in in a film school in Łódź and in in Babelberg University. I'm a uh, doctor, doctorate, can PhD candidate there. I'm teaching immersive technologies, but we're using AI for uh, doing concept arts, and we're very happy with that. But we have a lot of um, doubts at many levels, non technical levels, but rather ethical levels, artistic levels, and related to copyright. So, here I wanted to open the topic here because I had to leave uh, for a meeting, but the images that you show here. I would say that discourage, maybe that was your idea. I've been using for the last half a year those uh, gen image generators, and I think that they're phenomenal. And also there are other um, uh, software which, which, which correct those gl glitches, like these, um, the positioning of the eyes or some other things. For example, the change of, uh, of age of the character on the, um, uh, in the image. We're extremely happy with that. The only problem is it it really sort of undermines the education that students have within the frames of of um, graphic arts and the fact that you can compete. Uh, I have the feeling that I got interested in AI twenty years ago. Uh, right now, I've been observing that f the, uh, the text to image generation for last half, half year. I use the stable diffusion dream studio and DALI too. And the progress over the last few months is just shocking. The fact that you can input your own face and generate uh, images out of it, that you can teach styles in men in several steps. And uh, what I'm doing well, it takes about two hours to, to prepare. And for example, after you upload the, the um, sketches to the image generation would be very like photorealistic photography later. I have a feeling that practically every three days there is a sort of revolution. So if, if you say it, it will be there, if something will be there in half a year, it's after a week. And uh, I, I got overwhelmed by that. I had a moment of experiment with composi composing music by AI, which is also quite interesting. but. Interestingly, it's not as useful as the images. I was afraid to enter the area of animation made by AA, but because it's too radically, it cancels too radically my role in the um, uh, in the film industry. And there is also script generation by AA. So I got um, I got inspired by this title and I'm interested in the um, opinion of other people in the room because I my answer to, to the title of your lecture is that unfortunately I have to say that as a director as a producer I can have concept art in unlimited amounts than uh, working with concept art artists and the storyboards too and this is horrible because a lot of people are talented, they are educated, and they are, they have those professions and they are in our industry. Last week I was in Potsdam con at Potsdam conference concerning the problems of introduction of new technologies. The only s s um, b voices I heard and they made sense was, was about the regulation of uh, film industry and protection from AI, because we can't suddenly pull pull out, uh, pull off from the market one fourth of the of the professions, and nobody will agree that uh, to that in the United States, because uh, you know the commercials in a year, all the animated commercials will be AI generated. In Europe, we might still stop that uh, Armageddon, that we will not be thinking about whether AI will generate um, a, uh, storyboards cheaper, but maybe we want those people to have work, to have uh, jobs. This is my reaction to the title of your pro of your. Um, lecture and I'm well I'm also interested in uh, what you think about it because if you think that it is not catastrophic enough as you've mentioned this is not so that we have time that in 20 years we'll see it can be that so that in two three years some simple app will be ma making a much better video than the majority of people throughout their whole lives 
And it's not because it will be so wise, but because it has so many cycles, processors, and GPUs that it will be able to render a thousand different movies when you will be sleeping, there will be another one thousand, and some of them will be good. Yeah. When they were, you know, this document on a, a Disney Channel about industry light and magic, they were saying that when they, of course, Lucas always believed that, but when they came to them with the information that they will be introducing digitalization and special digital special effects, they said that they don't have to be worried uh, for five years and they started um, lay off people after one year. And that that's how it, it serious it was. And this wave is bigger. What do you think? What, do you want to uh, study Python to be able to do that too? I think that my friend is talking about the, the danger that uh, comes, and what I can observe uh, after what I wh what I have around me is that people who use AI are mainly artists from the threatened um, uh, threatened environments. They're people who are, are aware of that threat, and they know those tools to such a good extent that if I want to use them, my uh, subcontractor or a person who does the job for me know it four times better than me. So this threat uh, disappears if you professionalize, if you learn, then I don't have to do it. And it, it uh, keeps, it, it, the, the, the things stay balanced, but it, it's, it doesn't work like that. I have a problem with it from, with it from my perspective that it get, that get, gets cannibalized. When I made this art for, f for playing, very quickly, geometrically, people's expectation rise. And they say, uh, they say, well, I have this app, it does this. So you did that on AI, you build uh, various topics for many years, and they say, well, I have this app, and it gets so distributed that it enters, it becomes so uh, omnipresent that the question uh, remains, uh, can we avoid this if we are uh, overflown by, uh, if, if we're flooded by the content and everything will be uh, rendered on the fly? Because we're talking about immersive things, just like, as you mentioned, if we, if we have this face swap. I mean, I like that a bit, that I would like to have me films about me that an actor would play, and I upl upload my model and my face is there and say, look. Uh, I flew this plane here, I shot, shot the gun or tank here. Today it's not that easy, but it's not that difficult either. I can even put it on in the so in the meanwhile. I will I wanted to refer to the to my colleague here. One of the more scary things that I heard about those games because I was really also very excited to read um for the for the last three months uh, on all those groups where people divide share divide share those uh, images the generation stopped being an in important topic the topic was who is it art uh, who, who's the artist the american art defines that it's the one who started so it is an artist of sorts but then the atomic topic appeared to what extent we train now professionally this ai as artists because it is so that if you generate those five images which you get on prompt, you select the ones which are good. Then you will correct it with ink paint. You will improve that protruding head or, or, or something that was wrong. And these companies in, gen in, in general are mostly closed to the tab And in stable diffusion, there is a... Um, a um, sort of uh, social meeting where you can ask um, questions and many people came to the conclusion that the level of monitoring our our reactions to what's ha what we do is uh, incomparably higher than uh, the, the initial training on the sets of, uh, of images. So we now teach them in a conscious way which generated image for the artist, because many artists, as you mentioned, does that, which got it, which was right, and we're creating another generation of AI, which is, will be a true competition. Because of course, yeah, many of our artists said it's gonna be the next tool. 
But if they spend hundreds or thousands of hours to improve the correctness of the artistic correctness, because the one the thing that AI cannot learn is the taste. If human beings think it's tasteful, and that's what we're teaching this the technology, I'm I'm really sort of t horrified. I think only the legal protection can regulate that. I also think that um, the, the feedback loop, because that's what it's called in machine learning, that we get uh, the information uh, of reaction, is really dangerous. A, a simple, a simple thing. I, I trivialize a bit to, to, under, to understand it. Let AI generate a thousand images, short animations, a let, let, hundred thousand, let's say, ten second animations on some. Uh, topic from a prompt it will not be tuning the prompt will just will take 1000 images we put them on tiktok in 1000 different uh, anonymous um, accounts and see where it where it works and see what tune do we have we have whole statistics available how many people watch that how what was the point of of, of concentration of the of ice where what was the feedback how people got away from this whether we um, we have we stand no chance against that it even if you wanted to win it's as if you wanted to win uh chess against the computer he will get all the all the um, uh, games calculated and you have no chance that you will you will catch up so this is a huge problem there are discussions about responsible ai but I think that so far it's um, not uh, judged well and we do not know how powerful it is in, compar in combination with all this machine learning and with all those big platforms which are able to judge our content. I know people already right now who, has, who, who are, you know, putting several dozens of videos on TikTok to see, to see which catches better. But there, there, there are things like that. So, you know, with AI, that's going to be dangerous. I would like to ask you, because you talked about the regulations, uh, how you would think that these regulations should look like? To what extent uh, it can be regulated? What, what did you learn? Because I, I, I'm, I'm really willing to know. I wanted to add one thing, that maybe the protection may arise from the specific specificity of uh, of film professions, because we in concept art in Babelsberg, we co uh, cooperate with um, Alex McDowell. He's an he's a production designer. Um, he was responsible for the Minority Report or Fight Club, and he was working with students in California. And I asked him about his opinion, and he said that they used it, but because he for over ten years has a stable uh, theory of the world building theory which assumes a very deep development of the world before we start to get the story and and images out of that he said that they're not able to get deepening of the images so far with the a with a that those artists that have the skills and digital tools are able to use so it's uh, th there are so many things assumed in world building that it has to be there that in order to explain that to ai and to be make it um, artistically coherent it's still better to be done by human artists and it, this is some sort of hope because world building is so humanistic and so complex theory because it, it because it assumes uh, co ecological and psychological connections in this world just like you can see that in the minority report is so much richer than in the in the short story that it gives humans some chance to imagine this world in a more precise way that we would be able to explain now on regulation we're living in some incredible times that one crisis gets is, turns into another crisis and over the last three uh, three years all most of the free market rules were broken uh, even though we were told they're sacred so um, a huge um, uh, means word are transferred from one people to another i'm a great lover of lem and lem wrote that 
we can learn from history how it was within the introduction of steam engines. If we take away from the people intellectual work, the creative work, we are undermining fundamentally the existence of people. Lem was foresaw that. Lem foresaw that it's happening right now. One of the Google AIs generated 200,000 de designs of proteins which can exist, and now we we only have to see if, if those protein what those proteins can do, and. Lem said that this is how science can disappear. You know, you can generate uh, all sorts of results and then just sieve them out, sieve out those which are which would be useful. Art is a is a thing that a person should do, and it enriches you. And from that point of view, from the point of view of what's happening here, and that was also the discussion during the conference that we just as you say about the broadening of the of the um, catalog of human rights. There should be a catalog of protected jobs and pro and artistic jobs should be uh, protected as the first one because it would be it was very difficult to say that, for example, that accountancy makes you more noble. I'm not saying not that, that not because I don't know anything about that, but it's easier to say that if you're a graphic designer or if you're a, um, it, it, it's sort of, is um, nurtures parts of your humanity, humanity, internal humanity. So non-competitiveness in those jobs should be um, introduced in Europe. Of course, we won't be able to do that with the with the US. For me, it this might this will meet I mean, that there will be a regulation of availability of the software which goes against the open source. In the conference, they also did, there was a great girl from uh, LA who said that one of the mechanisms of protection of the whole creative team in the process of, but I mean, because she brought that, that a lot, because some people do not have that such a chauvinistic approach that hum, human is better than AI. She said that if we have a good blockchain, you know, the, 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 we have the NFT. If this, she said that if it's a well-made NFT blockchain, then it, it should not only include everything that uh, all those that created that movie or whatever, but if it was you, the AI was used, then AI, especially the first AI, it it was not they were not built from the outset by themselves. It it was the, like groups of scientists that nurtured them. Blockchain has such a capacity that it could have everything inside, but that would mean that the image generated by some artist based on an idea to which Photoshop was used, and uh, right now it will you will have an AI plugin to Photoshop. That would mean that there will be 200 authors from the outset, as those who were you know who could say that it was a part of their job. But it's some sort of a solution because AI, especially in digital form, will allow to follow the path of creation. We could theoretically also um, judge better the works which are outside of the AI circle cir circulation. So if you in blockchain and NFT, we could see that it was t completely created by humans and that every step was verified. If we agree and the market will accept this, this will be unique, just like a difference between the printed graphics and the painting on the wall. Um, it would be, of course, a digital um, art, not uh, AI generated, but it's an open topic. I would just say that at the stage of idea, this is doable. But now think, let's say we trained uh, AI in 500 million copies of, of images in some category, let's say face. And it is not so, we cannot say unanimously how does it do it, just to list all those people. It sometimes it does something because it doesn't do something. So you, so we'll give somebody negative credits that it was painted as the somebody, like somebody, does, somebody doesn't do. It's like in simple uh, situation in the classifications. Uh, we go left or right. We so we go right because we do not go left. I'm just just to give you some into 
I show you intuitively that it sometimes also work like this because it works like this because it doesn't work like that. So the one who didn't contribute also contributed. It avoids drawing according to somebody's style. So we're getting into some very abstract topics um, that will show us how um, uh, this how um, new neuron layers work with propagation and other things. If people were able to say that in such a simple way, tell me why it happens like this, then they would know what to put in the prompts. And here they do not know. So we guess and we write uh, together the... But I can see some... I, I can see a question there. So are there algorithms or can there be algorithms for... Um, finding out for what what was created by AI to be to block that in the future i think they would have to be developed but i don't think they would be able to block everything they will not the find the faces for example it's a similar uh, as you can it's a similar question that you cannot identify what was used if you when you look at the end of effect if, it's like in music you you have uh, sounds which you know that they're chords we use you you hear the waves of the of the sound but you do not know exactly how these um, sounds were developed also in order to find out what was built here what was used here to answer this question from other, another angle whether it's true or artificial intelligence soon will not be able to discern that can i ask you a question because there's always some context. The artificial intelligence is always also a tool for an artist. So I think also that, uh, am I wrong, that artificial intelligence by itself does not create certain images, as you said, but like this experience with the uh, experience with this TikTok, there has to be a person that it ha they have to have an intention. So aren't we afraid that there will be a new tool and some people will lose jobs but maybe a, a lot of new jobs will appear no new, new specialties will that will be using this these things not only for creative work but also for research for studies for testing certain mechanisms because i think that the tool itself will not find the artistic context even if it does the most beautiful picture without the good query without a good uh, prompt nothing will get produced it, if you get the wrong prompt it doesn't generate anything but to finish because I don't we do not have any time left I think the problem is more like hybrid that I can mm -hmm, that I can have one uh, machine to make prompts for me the other one will generate from the prompts and the third one will be verifying and then uh, within a very limited time I would generate like a huge number of works and I can have a farm of servers, a thousand of servers, and I will be generating million pictures at an hour and I will be verifying that and I will be extremely efficient even if one, I will be phenomenal if one in a million I will be the best in the world and I can um, I can get those prompts out of books from literature I can um, I, ca I can have AI for building prompts no problem the thing is it is a very brutal brutal force it's a brute force i can brute force uh, i can damage the whole reality that is in existence today this is the problem because the, the, if we click it's not it's fun yes but here we're afraid understand together of how what if it's if it becomes a mass thing and i think it's being built somewhere Great, thank you, thank you very much. One more thing. If you wanted to continue that topic, you're invited. I would like to make the uh, AI musical video. If you want to join me after the lecture, you, you can learn more or uh, leave your contact details. I will be glad to stay in touch. Mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, we'll be able to do something together. Thanks a lot.